Hello, welcome to the European Open Briefing for Thursday, September the 21st. I'm Rafi Boyajian, currency analyst at XM.com, and we're going to be looking at what's happening in the currency markets today. So we had the FOMC meeting yesterday, and as expected, the Fed announced that it will begin its uh, balance sheet unwinding uh, in October, um, and it stuck to the details that were published back in June in terms of how they will go about doing that. Uh, and they kept uh, the uh, Fed funds rate unchanged uh, as expected. But we saw a bit of a rally in the US dollar. Uh, and the reason for that was that the projections of the next two years were a bit more hawkish than what markets uh, were expecting. So this drove dollar yen uh, to above the 112 level. Uh, the yen um, is broadly lower uh, this morning, uh, both due to the Fed uh, and also uh, the Bank of Japan policy meeting that, that we had uh, their announcement earlier today. Uh, the stronger dollar has pushed the euro and the pound below key levels, uh, while the kiwi um, is weaker this morning following some um, Although GDP data out of New Zealand was nine, broadly in line with expectations, uh, most analysts were expecting uh, a, st uh, a stronger figure um, uh, based on the uh, the current fundamentals. Uh, so that didn't go down too well uh, by traders. Uh, and oil is uh, has. Uh, did reach new highs early today. It has uh, steadied somewhat after a strong rally this week. Um, uh, we have OPEC meeting coming up tomorrow, uh, and um, OPEC ministers have suggested that uh, they could be discussing a possible extension to the output deal. So let's start with the dollar. We can see both the dollar index and the dollar yen are up sharply. Dollar yen uh, has uh, broken above 112 level. Uh, it's at a two months high, uh, hitting 112.71 index is a two-week high uh, of 92.70 currently trading just over those highs at 92.50. Uh, so as expected, the Fed said that it will start uh, lowering its reinvestments in its 4.5 trillion balance sheet, uh, the, the proceeds of the of uh, expiring uh, treasuries, uh, the, the amount that's reinvested uh, will be gradually reduced. Uh, they will start by putting a cap of 10 billion a month, uh, rising to rising gradually to 50 billion uh, in the over the next 12 months. But more importantly, we had the latest dot plot chart by the Fed. Um, we saw that uh, the Fed is still expecting to raise interest rates by one more time this year, uh, most likely in December. Uh, and projections for the next year in 2018 were left at three rate hikes unchanged from the June forecasts. Uh, although we did see one less rate hike in 2019, that has been pushed back into uh, 2020. So that's why we saw um, the dollar going up sharply after the, the meeting, because uh, given the recent low inflation readings we've been having, uh, many analysts were expecting a much more dovish uh, rate pr rate hike uh, projection. Uh, and let's, let's see at the impact on U.S. Treasury yields. We can see that short-term uh, bond yields, the two-year bond yields of t uh, Treasury notes, uh, has uh, surged to a, a nine-year high of 1.451% this morning. Uh, it's just off those highs at 143 Three, uh, but we can see the divergence between uh, with 10-year yields. 10-year yields have been gradually declining uh, over the past 10 years, uh, but uh, they still managed to climb to a six-week high of 2.289%. Uh, so that all, all has obviously been supporting uh, the dollar, uh, but has been negative on gold, uh, which has slipped below the key 1,300 level, uh, hitting a three-week low of 1,200. And, uh, 93. Uh, let's look at uh, the yen. We already saw against the, the yen against the dollar, and uh, the yen is also sharply weaker against both the euro uh, and the pound. Uh, we, the Bank of Japan kept its policy unchanged at the end of its two-day uh, policy meeting uh, today. Uh, in the press conference that followed by Governor Hariko Kuroda, uh, there wasn't much new uh, in in terms of the outlook and. Um, uh, 
uh, and what Crowell generally had to say. Uh, his, his, he, although he does say that inflation is still distant from the target, uh, but current policy is sufficient to achieve its target, uh, and the Bank of Japan did maintain its busy easing bias. Uh, the only surprise was uh, that one of the new members uh, did uh, actually uh, dissent uh, against the vote. Uh, he voted for uh, looser monetary policy, saying that the current policy was not enough uh, for the bank to be able to hit its 2% uh, target. So that uh, weighed uh, on the yen even more uh, after the a bit more harsh than expected Fed. Uh, so, so we saw uh, the pound, the yen hitting a 50 months high of 152.24. Uh, the euro is also up, but uh, hasn't managed to break above a Tuesday days 21 months high 134.15 Looking at the euro and the pound against the dollar, uh, both uh, came down sharply after the FOMC decision yesterday. Uh, the euro had actually managed to uh, climb about 1.20 yesterday, uh, but its four, day, uh, four straight days of gains ended after the FOMC. Uh, it fell uh, not just below the 1.20, but below the 1.19 level uh, as well, currently trading just uh, below that level. Um, the pound... Uh, did yesterday actually we had stronger than expected UK retail sales numbers uh, that drove the uh, sterling to uh, fresh 50 months high 1.3656 uh, but now of obviously after the um, the Fed announcement it has dropped uh, as well though it has managed to reclaim the 1.35 level uh, and also uh, perhaps um, supporting the pound as well this morning is the fact that uh, the, the Prime Minister Theresa May and uh, her Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson have appeared at least uh, for now to have settled their differences over uh, how they will go, how they want to go about uh, the, the Brexit negotiations. Um, moving on to the Aussie and the Kiwi, another pair uh, that have been uh, pushed lower by the stronger dollar, uh, but both currencies have additional factors weighing on them. Uh, the, uh, the Aussie has been hurt by uh, falling metal prices, particularly iron ore, um, but uh, there are other factors in support of the Aussie. Uh, for example, uh, expectations have been rising that the RBA uh, will be raising rates around about the middle of next year. Uh, we had the RBA governor Philip Lowe speaking earlier today. Uh, he, although he was, he tried to um, not be too specific. Says rates are more likely to go up uh, than down, uh, but he said that's not going to be happening for some time yet. Although um, most likely. Uh, 2018 will be the likely date when we will see rate hike uh, in Australia. Uh, at the looking at the Kiwi, um, it was hurt by GDP numbers, uh, although GDP came in as expected by 0.8%, depending, of course, which forecast you're looking at. Uh, some forecasts were expecting uh, uh, around 1%. 1%. Um, th but overall, uh, traders were disappointed by that number because GDP was boosted by one of factors such as New Zealand hosted um, rug rugby games that they and they also had a surge in tourism uh, during the quarter. Uh, so excluding those factors, GDP was rather disappointing given uh, the fact that New Zealand's economy is supposed to be doing much better than other advanced uh, economies. So that's been negative on the Kiwi currently trading at uh, down by 0.6% against the uh, US dollar. A quick look at oil prices. Uh, we have an OPEC meeting coming up tomorrow uh, where OPEC and non-OPEC uh, countries will be discussing a possible extension of the output deal which uh, ex ex uh, expires in March 20. Uh, 19. Uh, we saw WTI hitting a four months high uh, earlier this morning uh, of $50.70 a barrel. Um, Brent crude is at a five months high. Uh, we also had the US inventory numbers yesterday. Well, uh, US gasoline and diesel stocks fell sharply, mainly due to the uh, hurricane impact, uh, while oil stocks rose by more than expected. Uh, so things are looking a bit more bullish uh, for oil prices. Uh, we can see that uh, WTI oil, although it has drifted from those highs 
early in the Asian trading, it has managed, it is so far managing to hold above the $50 barrel uh, level. Uh, and looking at today's economic calendar, we also had a central bank uh, decision by uh, in, in Norway, the Norway Central Bank, they held rates unchanged at 0.5%. There's not going to be much data in the US session apart from the weekly jobless claims uh, and the Philip Head uh, Manufacturing Index. Uh, and we're also going to have the flash consumer confidence index out of the eurozone later in the day uh, ecb president mario draghi will be speaking at 13:30 gmt though it is unclear whether or not he will be commenting on monetary policy that's it from me thank you very much for watching and have a great day